Overpromised is presented by DraftKings Fantasy Sports. Check out what DraftKings has to offer this season with code OVERPROMISED because life's more fun when you're in on the action. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. All right, welcome to Over Promise, brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, our bonus podcast live from Mandalay Bay, Vegas, Radio yeah. Row Super Bowl. It's Cavino and Rich. Now, today we got a couple cool guests on the show. Yes. Uh, we're going to be joined by Kevin from The Office, Brian Bumgarner coming up in just a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Office fans are going to love that. He's a big football fan, too. And Gary V. Gary Vayner. Chuck. Going to get a little motivational, uh, so we'll get to all that right here on Overpromised. <laughs> Yo, we're here with Gary V, one of our favorites, man. Always good to see you, Great man. to see you guys. Yeah, no, you bring a great vibe immediately. Thank you. But, dude, how do you get from one side of the room to the next when everybody knows you, everybody wants to talk? Dude, how do you have a, do you have a polite saying? If like, I can't, I don't yeah. know how you can. Bro, it's <laughs> so crazy. My whole life that this has all been going on. I will stop for everyone because I'm blown away that people even want to talk to me. Like when you grow up wanting to be a businessman, you never think you're going to be known. You know, we're enough of the close yeah. to the, you guys are younger than me, but like businessmen weren't famous. And if they were, they were like Bill Gates. I'm like, I don't want to be that nerd. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> so, true. So, true. so this, this snuck up on me. So over the last 10 years, I'm just so grateful for the attention. So I always used to stop. Now it's more about, now I'm educated. If I stop and I'm late for y'all and you guys have a schedule, I feel like I'm being disrespectful to y'all. So my answer, I look down. Oh, I say that to him. Don't make eye contact. Don't <laughs> but, make any but, eye contact. But, bro, yeah. he wants to because, right. because you want, you know, yeah. it's a du- what's nice about being stopped is a win for both people. Can I share something right? from my culture Please. to you, Gary? Yes. Uh, I'm half Mexican, right? Yes. So we do the vato nod, like just the <laughs> nod of yeah. acknowledgement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need like, to learn the vato nod. Just one of these or a point or like our buddy Adam Shine, my guy, or and a hey now. now. Just a hey now. Just something I, to make I, somebody feel I, special. I'm, I'm very similar. I love the eye contact, the nod. The, the problem is you're not fully in control to what they're going to do. Right. No, that's Some true. Some people get the nod. Yeah. Other people see that as the opening for a 43-minute conversation when you have four seconds. Right. And then you feel bad. Like, to me, I'd rather just do the nod because if they come in for the talk and I know I'm about to be late, you feel, you feel not nice when you're rushing them out. So it's an awkward thing. But honestly, it's all very bougie, bougie, very yeah. luxury headaches. It's, it's a, honestly... My favorite part is the, is the airport where I actually have a few minutes. And I'll t- sometimes I'm like keeping them. They like want to go. And I'm like, oh, what? Any other questions? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Let me ask one more question on this, uh, like the etiquette, I guess, before we get into it. Gary Vaynerchuk here with Cavino and Rich. You know, sometimes you get mixed up on the greeting, the handshake. <laughs> like, what do you have a default automatic? When do you go I'm, in for the I'm, hug? I'm honestly bad because I like the slap. <laughs> Yes. And I like go and slap first, then shake. We or nailed slap it. We just, we just and hug. nailed it, yeah. We had a smooth one when you got here. Yeah, I noticed that. But that's because we're smooth dudes. Let's call a spade a spade. There's yeah. some people that are a little more corny than us <laughs> that just think it's a shake. I actually really like the hug. Yeah. Because even if you botched it and the person thought you were going in for something else, the hug can smother it. Yeah. And so the hug mitigates the awkwardness. And I, in, in general, am an. Eastern European hugger. Yeah. Like, I like yeah. the hug. I noticed that, too, in yeah. your videos. A lot of times someone, yeah. someone will say something real nice to you, and then you're, I'm yeah. De- I'm very, 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 like, hug. I, I, I definitely express my feelings through, like, words, but also, like, through touching, high fives, and hugging. Like, I, I'm very that guy. Well, Gary V is here, businessman, I entrepreneur, I so many thoughts superstar, and questions. tycoon, <laughs> motivational speaker, but, dude, businessman, king of Vayner Media. And we want to talk Super Bowl ads. Yeah, let's do it. My my first question is, I'm sort of torn on companies leaking the ads because me too. uh, Because I get it; they want to get it out there, but it doesn't create the urgency to watch the Super Bowl commercial. And I thought that was always a big part of the game. It changed the culture. Yeah, I agree. If you get it out and it hits pay dirt in social, you'll end up getting more views on it than even the Super Bowl, which is the number one way to get views. So the logic I get. I think the first crew that did it a decade ago, it was working. Mm-hmm. Now, to your point, it's oversaturated, the pre-release. I actually think the people that hold back get more because nobody's seen it yet. 
Yeah, so you, get bigger you see it ahead of time. Like the other day, it was like, hey, Momoa's in an ad with the guys from it's Scrubs. or the, you It's know. tricky. It's yeah. tricky. It's tricky. I would say that there is no right answer, that it could go either way. And I think that is what makes this question a really fun, challenging question for me, someone who likes to think he understands this craft. When clients ask me, mm -hmm. I literally tell them, the key is to have a very strong social media overall strategy. So if the strategy is to leak it, you've got to do something the day of the game. We call it Sur Super Bowl surround sound. Mm -hmm. I think you've got to do a lot of social before and after. I think the way I would do it, let's say the three of us start yep. a company tomorrow and we're doing a Super Bowl ad. To, I would say I would tease it yes. heavy on social for the week ahead and then do some really clever, like, like a continue payoff. it. The payoff's the ad, and then the post game, the after party. But like the Gronk field goal thing is sort of set yeah. up like there's a payoff to uh, yes. the, the hype up of what a, he's doing. Yeah, they've done a good job with that, and that like there's actuality to that. Like I think there's a lot more to do with Super Bowl ad. I think people should sell more stuff on Super Bowl ad. I've always wanted to do a Super Bowl ad where the ad happens, and you say, and by the way, this ridiculous deal will only be going on until the clock hits double, triple zero. Oh, no, so yeah, like that's, we, that's good. Right? Yeah, like that. We sell this for 100 bucks normally. We're going to sell this for $23. Special, or it's the 58th Super yeah. Bowl. We normally sell this thing for $150. We're going to sell it for 58 bucks to honor the 58th Super Bowl, but this deal is done when the game is over. That, I think, is kind of, like, I want to do that ad. Man. You like that? I, 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 do, I do like, like that. I do like that a lot. Hey, Gary, something we always mentally struggle with. Please. Can you post too much? I feel like... I feel like I've seen you say, you can never have enough content. And there are times where we post a video and then we have another piece of content coming. I'm like, do we give it a breath? Let me go very 301 instead of 101. Okay. Instead of a basic yes or no. I think your issue in that scenario is you don't post on enough platforms. Oh. This show mm -hmm. yeah. should post three times a day on LinkedIn. Wow. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> on LinkedIn? Yeah, link I don't even have I, a LinkedIn account. <laughs> I really don't, I link swear. Link yeah. LinkedIn is a viable, meaningful social network right now that this show would do incredibly well with because the reality is you touch a lot of subject matters that a lot of people that are professionals on LinkedIn want to hear about. Not in business talk, just in general talk. Yeah. We're just in our feeds. I'll give you another one. I do not believe, I'm gonna make a guess here, that this show is posting on Snapchat aggressively. No. Massiveness. Mm, yeah, I know. Uh, so we're, we're so, making notes. So what's happening here. We're looking at him, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're looking <laughs> at the boss, everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. just say so you no. Know. Here's the bottom line. I think that the thing is is that you are only looking at one or two platforms as where you can post. Twitter, you can post all day long. Mm -hmm. Just the way Twitter works. And Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. Sh what about YouTube Shorts? Are you posting on that? We're doing some YouTube. We're posting not, on not YouTube, enough. of course, but so maybe not enough. Not enough, so not enough I bet. Look. The, the fear is oversaturation, as you brought up the before. The problem is oversaturation isn't real because people aren't seeing it enough. Right. Like I, I, I always say that. I wish I was in someone's algorithm the way, like, you're in my algorithm, uh, Andy Santino and Bobby Lee are in my yep. algorithm, Theo Vaughn's in my algorithm. Like, I feel like I see the same people, and I'm like, they must, they, I wish they, they probably. What, what's happening yeah. is you're showing to the platform that this is the type of content you like. Yeah. And or you like that person. If you keep, one thing I tell people all the time, you don't like your algorithm. You're the algorithm. You're the algorithm. <laughs> you saw that? Yeah. Here it is. You don't like it? Mute it. Mute it. Start to mute accounts that are giving, mm -hmm. if a lot of people use fear and negativity to make you watch. If you feel like that's happening to you, mute it. On the flip side, if you see something you like, like it. Tell the algorithm what you want, that's the way to do it. Speaking yeah. of social media, we're all parents, we're all dads, and a lot of times I see people coming up to you about, they fear their kids seeing too much and being exposed too much on social media. Makes sense. And you always promote, don't worry about it, self-esteem, that sort of thing. That's, but, that's the macro. The micro is, if your 11-year-old is on TikTok and you don't like it, take her or him off TikTok. Right, right. What happened to parenting? No, that's true. That's what I was <laughs> going to ask you about. Uh, when my, you parents, say, my parents didn't let me watch Skinamax. No, but you did. Of course I did. <laughs> But I had to go. I had to go. Is that, a, is that a I had to go, But I had to go sleep over a friend's house. I yeah. know you watch scrambled booby on TV. Yeah. Spice TV. And spice. And I know what it is. Cinemax and but, but no. scrambled boobies was the night. Yes. I know. You you always say you know hey if you work on their self esteem you've got nothing to worry about. How do you build up a young person's self esteem today? Positive reinforcement on real stuff. Not that they are good looking or not that they got good grades, but when they act the way you want to, make a to do about it. 
You see that your kid opens the door, you have a 12 year old boy, and he opens the door to an elderly woman or a woman yeah. when you walk to the restaurant, you better go like he just won the Super Bowl that whole dinner. You see, you see all your ki- kids' friends picking on someone, and they're like, ah, oh, come on, guys. Like, let them alone. That's you go win. crazy. My, my nephew, Max, told his best friend to shut his mouth because the kid he was picking on's mom has cancer. Wow. I will cheer him and say it on public things like this. Yes. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> yes. I love it. You understand that? On Fox Sports. That. And, uh, again, one more question. It is Super Bowl week, Super Bowl I think in the past 48 hours, more than anything, the narrative keeps changing a little bit, and it turned into you can't bet against Patrick Mahomes. Right. I'm, just a, I'm a, can't nine, bet I'm a Niners, I'm a Niners fan. It's, it's, kill, it's killing me. So <laughs> your thoughts on that? Because all of a sudden, think, it's like I the think, Niners are I the think, powerhouse, think, but now you can't bet the, against I Patrick. I think the 49ers are going to be able to run the ball on the Chiefs in a way that most teams haven't this year, and I think that's the thing that people don't see. They may not be able to, but if the Niners can run the ball, they're going to win this football game. I got a couple quickies. I know you got to run. Yep. Busy guy, Gary V. Um, you talk a lot about, like, you love the you love the chase yes. and losing. You don't mind losing. That's why I'm a Jets fan. No, I was going to say, I'm a Mets fan. And you while, while as I was a little kid, the Niners won a couple Super Bowls, yes. they haven't won in 29 years, so I'm thirsty for this. But then I'm like, if they win... Does that chase go away? Like this part of you. One hundred percent. Part of you being a Jets fan, the charm of like, man, Gary really wants. One hundred. <laughs> nobody talks about the Red Sox or Cubs anymore. Yeah. It's nobody true. gives a crap. So there's truth to that. You actually, yeah. yeah I like That's that. It, boys. Real they're, quick, they're Taylor, Swift, Taylor Swift effect. Real quick. Is it is great it, for the sport? Yeah. Do you know how many families? Do you know how many twelve-year-old girls now love football? That will be moms in twenty years. Yep. This is massive impact on the NFL. All right, now let's go over some picks courtesy of DraftKings Sportsbook. Remember, code over promise. Now, I'm not saying these are likely bets, but, you know, the Super Bowl is a fun time to make some long shot prop bets where it's like, ooh, wager a little, you could win a lot, right? That's, that's sort of the fun of the Super Bowl. I mean, you, you could go Niners minus one and a half or two. You could go Chiefs as the underdog money line. I'm talking about more fun bets well again we're gonna get to the fun bets but the number one phrase i've heard in the past 24 hours you can't bet against patrick mahomes well i'm going to just saying i'm going to on every bet yeah um here's what i like christian mccaffrey i feel like he finds the end zone every game automatic right how about christian mccaffrey finding the end zone three times now that is a lot but we're almost feeling like one to two is guaranteed Three is plus 900. So McCaffrey, to pop it in the end zone three times, you bet 100, you win 900. Again, I uh, don't hate it because McCaffrey this, could be what this offense leans on with the run game. The second most used phrase this week, is the Chiefs defense better than the 49ers offense? And most people are saying yes. So does that factor into your decision here? Ah, though? hogwash. Nah, yeah, BS. McCaffrey three times. So McCaff. All right. Three TDs plus 900. Not impossible. Now, here's one that I think you might say, well, those odds are fantastic. First touchdown of the Super Bowl. Who's going to score the first touchdown? Now, the odds are, obviously, McCaffrey, Pacheco. Those are the, you know, the not crazy odds. Mm-hmm. Plus 1,100 for George Kittle. Now, Niners are driving, Ooh. moving the ball down the field. Let's say opening drive. Let's say Purdy hits... Kittle on a little slant pass in the red zone, plus 1,100, wager 100, win 1,100. And that would be a great tone setter for but 49ers. Again, that's, I'm not picking some like third in-line receiver, yeah. the backup running back. I'm talking about a guy that could very well, in fact, he scored the first touchdown of the Niners NFC Championship game. Are you picking strategically or wishful thinking? <laughs> A little of both. (laughs) But, hey, if you want in, of course, DraftKings Sportsbook, the official betting partner of the NFL for Super Bowl 58. And if you're looking for a super offer on the big game, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered. New customers can bet on the big game. Just turn 5 bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. But you got to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use our code OVERPROMISE. New customers, like you said, bet 5 bucks, Get 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Code OVERPROMISED. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800. 
1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y 467 369 In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. It's Covino and Rich over Promise Fox Sports Radio, and we're here with actor and familiar face. But the first time we're meeting him, Brian Bumgartner, everybody. Hey. Yes. Uh, thank you. It's very nice to be here. Happy Super Bowl. We, happy, it's almost here now. Happy Super Bowl. I'm a Niners fan, so this is like... I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> you know what it is? It's, a, it's an underlying feeling of everyone else is like, yeah, Super Bowl week. In the back of my head, I'm like, there's a game to be played there, still. There is, I know you're a big Packers fan, so... There is a game to be played. Yeah, you guys uh, you guys are fortunate to still be around, no, I have to say. Dude, my wife Times and her family... Two. My wife and her family, Packers fans. Okay. So, it's a battle in my house when that it's happens. A, yeah. But, uh, you know, Packers, honestly, as a fan, you should be pumped because the expectation, how the season started, how it ended drastically different very different yeah it uh no look i i thought they would make it more of a game i didn't think that uh quite frankly that they should have i mean they should have won i I wasn't i was i could not cannot say that i would uh predicting that i might have liked the plus seven and a half though uh, for the packers and that was successful so um, we're in Vegas. We got to discuss yeah, that, right? Yeah, there's so much random stuff I want to talk to you about. But yeah. being that you brought that up, as a Niners fan, I'm so confused because I, you know I'm trying to take my <laughs> Homer mindset out of it. Like Niners are going to do it. They're favored, but the sentiment from everyone we talked to was like, "Can't bet against Mahomes." So what is it? Which one is it? Well, <laughs> it's interesting. I th- this today is is making me nervous. I think the Chiefs are going to win. I, but, is that why you said sorry to him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly why. Yeah. I, but I, I feel I don't like that everyone thinks that because yeah. that means that we're probably wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, the, the, you can't bet against. I mean, I did twice in a row. Yeah. And I think a lot of people did. I, right. I had Buffalo and I had yeah. uh, Baltimore, and uh, I was wrong both times. I was gonna say. I mean, throughout the season, I'm, I'm sure you watch every week like we do. Yeah. Is it? They figured it out late? Because, I, I mean, we're talking end of the season. They were, like, barely beating teams. They couldn't, in the red zone, field goal, field goal, field, like, all of a sudden the Chiefs got it, I guess? Well, I think partly I think, um, I, partly I think that's true. I also think that they have an elite defense. And yeah. I, I think that we weren't talking about that we as weren't. much. And then you, you look back, and now all of a sudden you're like, wait, they haven't let up any, like, more than 30 points, yeah. right? Yeah, they, they are, because I, I – just had an episode about the Super Bowl on my podcast. I looked it up. I mean, anywhere that you look, Fox Sport, Fox Sports specifically had them number two defense. Yeah, and every everyone had them in the top five, and most had them uh, number two. And so I think that's part of it. I think that you know I can't be overstated that that. Well, Brock is not looking like he did during the regular season. I know you have to at least acknowledge that. And Mahomes isn't either, but in the opposite way. And I think I think that having been there thing, and look, I know that this is potentially totally overstated, but um, Andy Reid is a really, really good coach when you have two weeks to prepare. I know this. This is you got to have a different level of confidence. But, but I don't think with listen, that in your corner for think, sure. I don't think Brian knows though that on opening night when they did all the festivities, I, when when we talk to the Niners. I went up to each one. I looked him in the eyes and I said, are you ready to be a champion? And they all said yes. So, <laughs> so I feel I feel so that's it. So I that's my it. assessment. You know? <laughs> Again, the uh, eye test. Brian Bumgarner here on the Cavino and Rich Show over Promised. And dude, you know your football. You're a Packers guy. Did you play growing up? No. I didn't. I didn't actually um, because mostly it overlapped with, with basketball. I played I, I played basketball. So you on. were the guy so. that the coaches always looked at and were like, "Hey, man, we got to get you on the team. You want to play?" Like you were that guy. <laughs> yeah. Were you good at basketball? Uh, I was good at basketball. Do you still play every shoot around every once in a while? You know, I was in L.A. and uh, Los, that's Los Angeles to you and me. <laughs> um, early on, and I got invited to this like pickup league, like you know, like 
somebody rented a church gym and they played every Thursday night or whatever. And I showed up and uh, it, we were just going into, they call it pilot season, right? Where you're auditioning for, for new shows. And I, I'm playing this pickup game and this little guy, this little, this little energy guy comes in like pop, 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 like trying to back, I'm like backing him down, backing him down, comes in pop, 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 whack, and his elbow right into my eye, swelled up closed within 15 seconds. Damn. And I was like, you know what? This is not, this is not for me anymore. This <laughs> is not, done. This I was is say, not for me. Like pre-office, post-office, is it weird when you do those things? Because, you know, it's hard, because we always say it's hard to, uh, if you're at a restaurant and you're at a table next to someone that's very notable, it's hard to have your meal and not be like, yeah. Brian Bunger yeah. is right there. Like, is it, do people treat you differently when you try to maybe play a pickup game? Because it's like, probably, yeah. probably in part. And by the way, the restaurant thing is fine. Just don't, just, just don't take a picture of the person that you're eating with, but really take it of me. Because I promise you, I see it every single time. <laughs> That is my least. That is the least. But do you see the people like, pulling out their like, phone? Hey, they're like, hey, I'm going to take a picture of you, you and your pasta. But the framing is like totally That's on me. Awesome. So it's funny. like, come on, guys. You know, tell us the perks, though. Again, part of an iconic show. Uh, Brian Bumgartner here. The Office. Kevin from The Office, if you're just listening. You know, it has to work to your advantage when it comes to cool events like this or football or when you're out and about playing golf because there is probably that mutual respect because they feel like they know you. Like, yo, yeah, right? Yeah. I, it, I, I will say um, I, I have less trouble getting a dinner reservation than probably So there you people. go. And that, you know, that, that's that a is, positive. That, that is absolutely – so much so that I really don't make dinner reservations. You just show the, up and you and say, no, here until I am. The, <laughs> until the day of, I will, yeah, like I don't, yeah. But that's partly, that's just, I just like, <laughs> I'm, I don't know where I want to go on Friday. I'll decide on Friday. You like, know what I, I want you know to be locked in. You know what I find fascinating? I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure if you see these things. Lately, more so than ever, I'm seeing all these hilarious office outtakes on like TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. Do you get a kick out of those? And do you forget some of them and say, holy crap, I remember, holy shit, I remember that moment. Totally. And I, you know, I went back and um, I had this podcast that I put together, which was an oral history of The Office. And I watched the whole show start to finish. This is a couple, a couple years ago. I watched it start to finish, watched the whole thing. And yeah, it was, it was amazing how much I'd kind of forgotten. And it was really fun for me. And, and in the moments you're talking about too, like you see something, you're like, oh, right. Like I remember... But I guess on, and I'm, by the way, I have no vested interest in selling Peacock, but I guess Peacock now have released these extended. Don't worry, we all have it because of the Chiefs Dolphins game. <laughs> well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> well, you could go back. I guess they've released these extended versions. And I actually do want to go back because I think those things, those moments that didn't make the original cut that I, I haven't seen or don't have any reference to since we filmed them. 15 years ago or whatever. So I'm kind of excited to go back for myself just to watch this. That's cool. I, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking you're a really funny guy. When you're in a room full of funny men and women, yeah. much, much like sports, when the competition's, you know, elite, do you feel like, man, I better be freaking funny today? Like, when, when those scenes keep going on, obviously, Gotta bring it. Yeah. obviously it's like improv and Steve Carell and Ed Helms and Krasinski. Everyone's, you know, one-upping each other with great lines. Is that where your competitive comedy comes out or no? You know, I, we were such an ensemble, but I will tell you, this was, again, when I was putting together this podcast, I talked to Greg Daniels, and he told me something that I, I thought that I knew, but, but him saying it was probably the greatest compliment that he ever gave me. You know, sometimes we were writing, and especially when the, when the, you know, the improv would happen and people would find funny things, a scene... Sometimes it was difficult to, to, to find what the end of that scene is. And in the comedy world, you call it a button. Like, what's the button of the scene? And I felt like, if I can say, uh, I felt like I was very effective at throwing in a line, a look, a comment at the end of scenes. And Greg Daniels told me when he couldn't find the end of the scene, he would go to the camera people and say, find Brian, he'll do something. And I could feel the camera come to me, and that's when I did it. <laughs> and a lot of that times, was it was just a great look. It was just a yeah. So <laughs> yeah. those uh, that that was that's probably the greatest compliment 
in terms of, of uh, my television work than anyone's ever gave me. Speaking I, of, I was uh, proud of that. No, that's awesome, man. And speaking of the superstar ensemble, again, The Office, do you watch all the other projects? Because everybody's branched off and has been part of other cool things. Do you automatically tune in or you pick and choose? Um... Like I, I just got on the morning show and I'm like, oh, that's awesome! Like, I, yes, that so that's a that's a great example. I feel like sometimes, especially when I hear something is really good. Yeah, the, the short answer is yes. I really do try to watch, but I also I do this about about every show. I just finished, and it's embarrassing, <laughs> Succession, like the whole thing through. Because I and, and the morning show is another example of that. When I hear that something is good, I, I want to like. Make sure that I have the proper time. Like I don't right. want to start yeah. it and then like a month later be taken out. So like I'll I'll try to find a time. So sometimes I'm delayed um, in doing that, but it's it's only because I want to like I, I really want to be able to focus and watch I mean, it. You're but, not too yeah. delayed. We had a friend recently that watched The Sopranos for the first time and they're like, <laughs> "Can you believe when Tony?" I'm like, "Yeah, I watched that 15 years ago." Like, Dude, you just woke up from the year 2000 or I something. Don't. You know what's funny is I just on for the I had a long flight recently, not here, but um, I guess it's 20 or 25 years or something from The Sopranos. Yeah, I, I 1999 was when. It, yeah. So it, it um, 25 years. I just downloaded the first uh, eight episodes on my iPad. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start Sopranos again. Sopranos, other than The Office, excluded. Sopranos is my favorite television show of all time. I saw a clip, Brian, of you. It was a little while back now. Celebrity Jeopardy. Yeah. How'd you do? I when I saw the clip, you had zero. What, I mean, did, did, did you? <laughs> did I? It must have been at the beginning. Of the yeah. Time. yeah. <laughs> That's no, not fair. What the hell? How, yeah. how did you do? And I, I heard you say that you had uh, talked to Aaron Rodgers uh, because he had done the guest hosting on how to how to approach Jeopardy. Yes, that's true. I, in fact, from outside of their studios, he and I finally connected. And I was like, okay, I've got like five minutes. Tell me, uh, tell me the biggest advice. Um, uh, it was it was a lot it was a lot of I did not win spoiler alert <laughs> I did not win I just actually was told last night someone was bringing this up to me uh, in the lobby of the hotel and I guess the person who won my match won the whole deal which would have been multiple rounds um, and uh, yeah it, it's I'll tell you this it's all about the button all about the button. It's all it's all about the button. If you hit the button in everything, even on your TV show, it's <laughs> the button. Yeah, but you, there I you mean, go. here's wow. the guy. He's good I with guess the button. That's in my he's, head. He's good with the button. If you hit the button before they finished reading the question, you get locked out. Because you see sometimes people like 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 what the hell's get, going you on? Get locked out. That's how you get past the zero that he saw. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know. Probably in the very <laughs> can't beginning. win like that. Probably yeah. in the very beginning. <laughs> but uh, you know, to tie it to sports, you were saying the person that beat you went on to win the whole thing. Do you have the mindset of like, well, the team that beats my team, well, at least I hope they win it all. Or you're like, F that team, they beat my team. It depends on the team. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I, yeah. I gotta be I gotta be honest. Yeah. One, there is a um, well, there is there is a there's a San Francisco, Southern California thing. So that that exists, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with the Giants and the Dodgers. I am a huge Dodgers fan. So that that plays into it. You'll win 125 games this year. But also, <laughs> I think we might. Um, yeah, you're, it's like you're no longer a, a, an issue for us. Yes. Um, sorry. No, that's rude and probably not. I should not say that. Um, but also the Packers and the Niners, um, the, a thorn in the Packers' side yeah. maybe is uh, all the way back to Kaepernick's record uh, rushing game uh, in the playoffs where I was, I was there. Um, Niners fans are, you know, here what does it, this doesn't get talked. To, I can't believe I'm going to say this right now. There's yeah. people listening. <laughs> I the Niners fan, people talk about Oakland fans. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've never been more scared than in the old Candlestick Park for that there's playoff some, game. Some crazy vatos locos. <laughs> there there's is some, there's it, some guys there with some is high socks. No <laughs> joke. No joke. There's, there's like some loud f bomb throwing yeah. <laughs> there like I was like this is not and that was now that was the old stadium but also yeah. if you were a fan and you went the the walk there were uh, over the con from the concourse like where the concessions are in the bathrooms like to the seats shook like shook yeah. like like this and you're like okay an earthquake we're all gone like we're just yeah. all all gone 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I I do like so many of the the, the players and components of uh, the Niners team now, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the Chiefs win. Well, enjoy the Super Bowl, man. Thank you. Enjoy your time they're, here. They're Thank you for you, uh, being on the show. They're saying you got to run, but you got to tell us real quick. PXG, we're we're the guys that are like we got to start golfing. You know, we're like we're you at don't the stage. Golf. No, I I, I I still play like softball and I'm getting hurt all the time. <laughs> I'm like, you know, they, I got to golf. I got to. golf. We wanted to know like the best way to get started and get involved. Well, yeah. for, for me, it's golf has brought me. Um, it, it gives me peace. And I, I'm serious because people talk about, oh, you know, I have kids, I have this, I, I, I can't go out there for four hours. Well, look, you, you spend your time, you, to me, you, you have to find something that gives you a release and gives your brain yeah. a, a break. And for me, it's golf. Because when I'm out there, work stuff goes away, issues go away. It's literally like how, how few a times can I hit this ball and get it in this hole? And that's all I'm thinking <laughs> yeah. about. That's it. Yeah. And so everything else goes away, and I'm outside. It feels good. The vitamin D, and it's like great. Um, I uh, and PXG, um, they call them PXG troops in sort of a, an homage to Bob Parsons, who started PXG, uh, military guy. Um, it feels like a family, and their new clubs are it's called Black Ops, and I don't, I don't need to sell them. They're just better. That I, I, I played in a tournament. I've been doing this 18, eight, literally 18 years, these celebrity golf things. They got sent to me the first competitive round. I would played one practice round with them. I, I had the best score that I've ever had in one of those things, walking eight miles doing that because I just hit the ball further. So it's, uh, you know, if you, you guys aren't golfers, if you are a golfer, I would check out Black Ops. I'll put them up against anybody. And we got to get on it. Yeah, we really got to get on it. It's our new thing. We so, got yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for so hanging much, out man. with Thank us. Thank you so much. I we appreciate, appreciate you guys. It. It's Brian Bumgarner here on the Cavino and Rich Show, Fox Sports Radio, Overpromised. All right, welcome back to Overpromised. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us all week Ooh. here, Radio Row Please. in Las Vegas. Please, football if gods. If you miss any of our shows, catch our podcast. Just search Cavino and Rich wherever you stream your podcast. We had lots of great guests, lots of great shows, lots of excitement here on Radio Row. Mm -hmm. And now, so much excitement this week, and especially for this dude. So when we see you next time on yeah. Overpromised, will I be the fan of a Super Bowl champion, San Francisco 49ers? Will he, will he be the happiest guy going or the saddest guy going? Let's hope happy. Uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, Arriba Derchi, baby. See you in the overpromised land. Goodbye.